Abdul Majid, for example. And this gentleman you see in the photograph, he was Sir Markan Makar, who was knighted by the British royals. Right, so Sir Markan Makar, Sir Mohammed Markan Makar Effendi. He was an honorary consult appointed by the Ottoman Sultan. He held the position starting from 1903 up until 1915. He was the representative of the Ottoman Empire in Sri Lanka. Right, and at the time of his appointment, he was 28 years of age. He was the youngest consul of the Turkish Empire in the East. This has been recorded by Arnold Wright in the book 20th Century Impressions of Ceylon. So Sir Mohammed Makan Makar, he was a very popular figure at the time. And then his predecessors who held the position include Abdul Majid and Hassan Lebbe Marikar and many others. And those from the Maldivian royal houses, the DD clan, some of them also held important positions as representatives of the Ottoman Empire in our part of the world. And during the British colonial period, there were Muslim delegations sent to Mecca, Medina, the Hijaz area, was ruled by the Ottomans. Many areas that, are, that encompass present-day Saudi Arabia, as well as northern regions of Africa, Egypt, and many other regions were under the Ottoman control. So during that period, there were many delegations. There were emissaries sent from Sri Lanka to meet the Ottoman Sultan, as well as delegations over there. And then this outfit that you see, this well-embroidered outfit was in fact sent by the Sultan. The Ottoman Sultan is said to have sent it to Sir Makan Makar, who was the honorary consul of the, of the Turkish Empire in Sri Lanka, starting from 1903 up until 1915. So these are photographs of various Moors and royals from Maldives. Maldives is a neighboring country. So the Maldivian royals, Sri Lankan Muslim elite, like Sir Mohammed Makan Makar, Abdul Majid, various other Muslims, right, as well as the royals of uh, Maldives and more chieftains, the squires, aristocrats, nobles, business leaders, Mughals at the time, those who held important positions in the country, they all bore the Turkish fez. So the Turkish fez became very popular. The Turkish flag with the moon and the crescent became very, the crescent and the star became very popular among the Muslims. Most of the Muslims in Sri Lanka used to have these flags at their residence. And now what you see is in fact the residence of the Sir Makan Makar. So this Sir Makan Makar, the representative of the Ottoman Empire, the honorary consul, went all the way to Turkey. He was in fact greeted by King Edward VII of Great Britain. He was in fact the man who was invited and he dined at Buckingham Palace. Then he also came to the Ottoman Empire. He was received well by the Ottoman Sultan at the time. So when he visited Istanbul or Constantinople at the time, he was in fact amused. He was in fact uh, spellbound by the architecture that he witnessed. So he wanted to build a house that he witnessed over there. So he came to Sri Lanka. When he returned to our country, right, he visited Turkey in 1909. So he was very fond of Turkey. He was fond of Constantinople. He came to our country and he built a house. And the house he built is still called Stambul Villa after Istanbul. So in Colombo, in Kolpiti, which is known as Kolupitiya, he spent 5,000 English liras. He spent exorbitant sums of money designing this lavish house. This sumptuous villa was built by Sir Muhammad Makan Makar. And the road where this house was built is still called Stambul Place after Istanbul, right? So Sir Mohammed Makan Makar's residence, Stambul Villa, was also the headquarters of this honorary consultancy was run at his residence. It, was also the, it also played host to various events. The Arabian Night that was organized by the wife of Governor William Manning were all held at this Stambul Villa, which was the residence of Sir Makan Makar. Likewise, many of the Muslims at the time used to have this FND title attached to their names, like I mentioned. If you want to know more about it, you could read the writings of Estem Taufik. Estem Taufik was the writer of a Turkish magazine. He visited the country in 1930, and he was in fact invited by Sir Makan Makar to his residence. Makan Makar Effendi, that was his full name. So Makan Makar, when he invited this man called Taufik, Estem Taufik, who was a Turkish journalist and author, when he came to the island and when he visited different parts of the country, he saw that many Sri Lankan, the Ceylonese, were wearing the Turkish fez and they were clad in Turkish uniforms and Turkish clothing. 
Turkish fashion was very popular among the Ceylonese Moor elite, among the Muslims of Sri Lanka. So please note, in Colombo, there is a road called Stambul Place, which is named after Istanbul, and there is a famous sumptuous villa that it was owned by Sir Makan Makar's family, and the villa is now called, and it is still called, as Stambul Villa. And then what you see is Abdul Hamid II, the Sultan of the Ottoman Empire. So Abdul Hamid II, the Sultan of the Ottoman Empire, was revered, was hero worshipped by the Muslims of our country. People in Sri Lanka, the Muslims of our country, loved him enormously. He was respected so much in the country that there were schools erected in his name. The oldest Muslim school in our country. Like in our country, there are so many Muslim educational institutions. But one of the, the oldest institutions was built in 1880s. And this school was originally called as Masjidu Kairatul Ismailia, right? And this school, which is the oldest school. And later in 1901, to mark the 25th anniversary of Abdul Hamid II's reign, to mark his anniversary, the silver jubilee of his majesty, Sultan Abdul Hamid II's reign, this educational institution, right, which is Masjidul Ismailiyah, Ismail was renamed as Masjidul Hamidiyah, right? So Masjidul Hamidiyah was the, is the oldest school in our country. It was named Hamidiyah after Sultan Abdul Hamid II. So the oldest school in Sri Lanka, oldest Muslim school in our country, the oldest Muslim educational institution, built in the 1880s, was renamed in 1901 as Masjidatul Hamidiyah after Sultan Abdul Hamid II. The hall is called Hamidiyah Hall. You can see the facade of the Hamidiyah Hall. The photograph that you see are students who attended Hamidiyah school wearing the Turkish fez. It was not because it was patronized by Abdul Hamid. It was not because of a special connection, but it was because of the reverence. People in Sri Lanka loved Sultan Abdul Hamid II. So because of this particular reason, they named the very first Muslim school in our country after His Majesty Sultan Abdul Hamid II as Al Masjid al Hamide, which was later renamed as Hamidia Boys English School. It is now called as Hamidia Al Husseinia School. But at the time, in 1901, there was a foundation laid by Abdul Majid, who was also an honorary consul to the country, and he laid the foundation. If you go to the school, you'll find portraits of Abdul Hamid II at the hall of the school, Hamid al Husseinia, which was then called Masjid al Hamidia or Hamidia Boys English School, which was named after Sultan Abdul Hamid II of Turkey. There is a road in Sri Lanka, in Halsdorp, in Colombo, which is called Abdul Hamid Street. So we have a road in our country that is named after the Sultan of Turkey, Abdul Hamid II. We have a road called Abdul Hamid Street in our nation, named after Sultan Abdul Hamid, the Sultan of the Ottoman Empire, who was revered and hero worshipped by the people of our country. Likewise, Abdul Hamid was so generous that when the boys did well in their studies, when they excelled with good grades, Sultan used to send gilded Qurans as gifts. So Sultan Abdul Hamid II used to send gilded Qurans to the, to the students who did well in their studies. Outstanding students were sent gilded Qurans. This has been recorded by Tawfiq, by Akram Sultan and many other writers have mentioned about this. Likewise, when Abdul Hamid was celebrating his 33rd anniversary to his accession, what happened was from Sri Lanka, the Ceylon Islamic Society sent him a silver box in the year 1908. This is before the Young Turks Revolution and all that. Likewise, when Sir Makan Makar visited the country, Sir Makan Makar who was the honorary consul of the Ottoman Empire in Sri Lanka, when he visited Turkey in 1909, he was received by Sultan Mehmed Resat, the Sultan that you see here. He was received well by him and he was treated well and he is reported to have recorded the hospitality which he received in Constantinople at the time of his visit. And that's the reason why he came back and built the Stabul Villa in Colombo, right? And likewise, as I mentioned earlier, there were portraits of Abdul Hamid II of uh, of Ottoman Empire, whose portraits were hung at the Hamidia school, 
which was then called Masjid al Hamidiyah, and then later named as Hamidiyah Boys English School, and now it is referred to as Hamidiyah al Husseiniyah, which is one of the premier Muslim educational institutions in our country. And there's a road called Abdul Hamid Street. And during the wars as well, the Sri Lankan Muslims extended their fullest support to the Turks. Even during the First World War, during the Baltic Wars, during the War of Independence in Turkey, there were finances, there were monetary gifts made by the Sri Lankans. They sent various gifts to the Ottoman Sultan as well as to the officials in the Ottoman Empire. The Ceylonese Muslims, the Moors, made financial contributions. This has also been recorded by Ekrem Saltik in his article that was published in 2020. There were many financial donations, endowments made by the philanthropists, by the elite of our country, by the Muslim gentlemen of our nation, sent donations, sent financial contributions, made them to the Ottoman Empire during the Baltic Wars, during the War of Independence, during the wars which the Turkey waged with Italy, and during the First World War in Sri Lanka. Something which has to be noted is that Sri Lanka was ruled by the British until 1948. Despite being a British colony, the Muslims of Sri Lanka not only financed and contributed as much as they can to help the Turks, but then they also supported the Turks living in the British colony. So there were many Turks who were arrested. If you read the books History of Ceylon Police by G.K. Pipet and A.C. Depp, you'll come across stories on how the Turks who were living in Sri Lanka or Ceylon at the time were arrested by the British officials and sent to the concentration camp as well as to various other places because Britain was against the Ottomans. This was during the First World War. And during this period, the Turks who were living in the country were apprehended by the British and they were sent to the concentration camps. So this is a story involving the history of Turks.